In the last video, we started our discussion about numerical calculations for psychrometrics, and we have this whole list of parameters that we are interested in, including humidity related things and temperatures, specific volume, partial pressures, degree of saturation, and where we left off is the numerical relationships for calculating out the saturation pressure given a temperature. And we had these relations which are related to SI units, but essentially we have something here where we can calculate the saturation pressure given any temperature. So we're now going to start on our journey with this case. So when we know the dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, and total pressure. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to solve for the saturation pressure at the wet bulb temperature. So we started with this wet bulb temperature. We got it from a, say, a sling psychrometer or something of this nature. And now we have that saturation pressure. From there, we can go ahead and we can calculate a humidity ratio. And because this is the saturation pressure at the wet bulb temperature, we assume that if we're at a wet bulb condition, that we are saturated. And we had derived this relation in one of the earlier videos. We have 0.622 times the partial pressure of vapor at saturation divided by the total pressure minus the partial pressure of vapor at saturation. And the 6.622 came from the, the relative magnitudes of the specific air constants for dry air and for vapor, which are related to the molecular weights of those two components. So. We went from wet bulb temperature to a saturation pressure, and we know this, and we know the total pressure. We now have the omega, or the hum absolute humidity ratio of saturation. And really, this is analogous to the humidity ratio we got out at the end of our thermodynamic wet bulb experiment, where we had a long channel filled with water. Just let me remind you of what that is. And air came in, and it came out saturated. And this omega saturated is related to this value we just calculated. Now, we're going to use one of the relationships we derived in this experiment. And let me remind you of what that looked like. One relation we came up with was the enthalpy of the moist air mixture coming in plus this omega saturation at the end minus the omega coming in, or absolute humidity ratio coming in, times the enthalpy of water, liquid water, at this temperature, at the dry or at the wet bulb temperature, that's equal to the enthalpy of the mixture at these at this saturation condition exiting. And along the way, we knew that enthalpy of the moist air mixture, we said that that is the enthalpy of the dry air portion plus the omega, our absolute humidity ratio, times the enthalpy at the saturated vapor condition. And I'm going to use G for that subscript. And we knew we are dealing with an ideal gas, and so these enthalpies should only be a function of temperature. And it just so happens that if we take a fit or a linear fit of this in SI units, H of dry air happens to be 1.005 or 6, I've seen it both ways times the dry bulb temperature, and this Hg, again, this is SI units, 
is 2,501 plus 1.058 T. So again, these two things here are only functions, functions of temperature. And so this total enthalpy of the moist air, we can put all this together. So really, this is 1.006 times temperature plus omega. And then if we put a parenthesis and put this inside, that is a relationship for our enthalpy of our moist air. One other relation that we know is that this enthalpy of liquid water, this term here, that's also going to have an approximation for it, a linear approximation, and that linear approximation is 4.186 times T. And so if you look back at this equation we had here, we now, if we are given a dry bulb temperature, we have this, and we just calculated out the saturation humidity ratio. We have a relationship for this versus T and this versus T, and we can now solve, we can now solve for this omega at our entering condition or at the condition of our moist air. And I'm going to do all that algebra in the next video. And you'll see that this, this equation for um, omega becomes semi-complex for a person to solve, but easy for a computer. And again, this is we're going through the numerical calculations for this in a way that would be easy to program and deriving all the things necessary for this algorithm. So hope you join me in the next video. See you soon.